Today I have five rustic red truck DIYs from Dollar Tree. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. For the first project, we're going to start off with some of this gorgeous fabric that I got from Dollar Tree. It's got little red trucks with a black background and this is in the Crafter Square section. I hope you can find this. It's so pretty. Some Rust-Oleum flat paint. It's white. I'm going to use a summer sign from Dollar Tree. I love the tag signs. And then I have some thrifted and some Walmart and I'm not sure where the other red ribbon came from. Then I'm just going to have some random picks that I might be using. And we're always going to start off by removing tags and hangers. Give this a good coat of spray paint. Only one coat. And then once it's dry, we're going to flip it over on our fabric and trim this down to fit. You want to leave enough on the side so that you can fold it over and hot glue it down. Be sure you protect your fingers. You might not get glue on them this way, but you can certainly feel the heat from the glue. You can easily flip your corners in like this to make them nice and neat. Or do it any way that you feel like you want to do it. And we're going to go all the way around just like that. And when you get to the top, it's just an easy fold over and a little bit of glue and it's sealed in there. That sign is completely covered by that fabric. I'm just going to trim off a little bit of this extra stuff here to make it kind of flat in the back and use a piece of this uh, paper and cut it down and put it on the back. Now I'm going to take this Believe sign or word. Um, there, It comes in a three pack. And I'm going to take it outside and spray paint it with that white one good coat is all it needed. And then decide what type of ribbons I want to use to make a really pretty bow to go on top. Oh yes, I remember now. This red ribbon was thrifted. I'm going to do about 18 inches, maybe a little bit over when you see me cutting here. Not exact. And I'm going to dovetail both sides of it. And I'll be doing the same process with each of the other ribbons. Just cutting, I think I probably cut two of each. We'll see when I start counting. So this is what's called a funky bow. Very easy to make and you're going to be happy with the results, I think. It's important that you choose a wired ribbon for these bows. You're gonna go halfway down after you folded it over, kind of pinch it in the middle, and then you're gonna squeeze it tightly in that joint between your thumb and your forefinger. Same way here, go about halfway down, pinch it toward the center tightly, and then squeeze it into your hand. Hold it in your hand. Same thing with the next piece, and I'm alternating pieces of ribbon, the different prints and designs, so that it will um, give us more variety of color in our bow. You're going to continue this process with the smaller ribbon there, that I think it's a one inch piece of ribbon. You don't have to squeeze that in the center. It, you, it'll just go right into your hand easily. Okay, so you can see I've tried to keep the exact same colors away from each other just like that and kind of disperse these colors and patterns evenly now when I first put this in my hand I put it next to the other one but you see I don't like the look so I'm just gonna pull it out and move it to the other side and so far I like the way this looks I love all the different patterns and textures so far now we have like a little bouquet you can use a twist tie, you can use a piece of um, pipe cleaner, but I like to use my zip ties, especially for this particular bow. It's a really thick where I'm holding it. It's very bulky right there. I did not take my hand off of that bow at all. I just used my other hand to wrap it around and then just pull that zip tie tight. Go ahead and cut the end off and then you can start fluffing that out. We're going to pull them away from the center and downward like petals on a flower. Away and down, away and down, just like that. 
opening up your loops. And then here I need to adjust just a little. So I pull down just a little bit. If you get your zip tie on really tight, you won't be able to move it at all. I was surprised I could move it because that thing is on there tight. Flip it over and then start pulling these apart. And you want to do the same thing with the tails that you did with the loops above. Separate the patterns, flip over those patterns to make sure they're all the pretty sides are down for now so that when you flip it over, they will be up. Just like that. Now just pull those pieces back out like you had them. Very easy to do, and that's why it's important that you use a wired ribbon. Uh, otherwise, everything's just going to be kind of flat. It's going to lay flat. We want a nice, poofy bow. Isn't she pretty? Okay. Now, I'm going to put that believe word back on there. And I thought maybe I would use a little bit of ribbon to help it stand out. Looks good like that. But I like to layer, so I'm going to put a little bit of this green over the last piece of that ribbon. Just that scrap of ribbon I had left. I'm just going to trim the green down a little bit. Make it look a little bit neater. And then protect my fingers and put a good bit of glue under the ribbon. Now it's going to press up through that ribbon on the bottom and catch the ribbon on the top. So it's all glued nicely down. Now I'm going to use some of this E6000. When it gets clogged, just run a little piece of wire down there and you can get it to work again. I'm going to squeeze a little bit here and there on the back of this believe sign so it won't pop off. You know how metal is with hot glue. And then very quickly and carefully add some hot glue kind of eyeball where it ought to be and then press it down. And now we're going to add a good bit of glue in the center of that bow on the bottom and flip it over on the top. Wherever you want to put it, mine's closer to the corner, to the left corner there. Now do you feel like you can do this bow? I think you can. We're going to add just a little bit of greenery. This is a thrifted pick that came from Dollar Tree and I well, no, Walmart. And I'll be using this pick a few times in this video. This greenery, rather. But you can get anything you want from the Dollar Tree. Anything you like. I like this one. It has a little bit of frosting on it. Just a little bit of frost. Tiny bit of glitter. And then I'm just going to tuck it in on that side. And then I like the placement of it here on the other side going downward. So I'm going to place it there. And this is what that tag sign will look like. You can use it as a leaner on your cabinet if you would like, or you can put a little hanger on the top. You can use whatever type hanger you want, but because this is a piece that is kind of out of balance, meaning that if you put it right in the center, it's going to lean to the side because of the heavy bow, you might want to use something like this so that you can slide it back and forth on the nail till you get it hung exactly as it should be. Follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Project number two. We're going to use some of these thrifted Merry Christmas ornaments. We're only going to use one, and I think it's a four pack. Just like that. Very glittery. I'm going to use another scrap of that same piece of fabric, and we're going to use one of these Dollar Tree ornament signs. I'm going to start by removing the the hangers and the tags like we always do and then I'm carefully gonna pull this metal piece up it's thin so you don't want to break it and then I'm just pulling off the hot glue off the back just to clean it up so it'll lay nice and flat when we put it back down I'm gonna trim off enough here and Mod Podge it down this is a satin finish but you can use whatever kind you like it's all gonna stick it down just like this one will Going to get good coverage all over where the fabric's going to touch. Hey, if you want to show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. Check out the link in the description box below. Find your space and press it down. Thank you for the coffee, Denise. Okay. Press it down from the center outward so you don't have any wrinkles or bubbles in there. And you could always iron your fabric if you would like to first, but um. I'm not like that. I just, I'm not going to do it. I know I can do it with my hands and save a little time. Okay, now I'm going to add my fabric, my Mod Podge on top of my fabric rather, all over, all the way to the sides. You can even see the edges through there. Thick coat, and I'm going to put it to dry overnight. 
I'm gonna cut off the little hanger pieces here and remove the ribbon and just make it look more like it's not an ornament. You know, make it look like it is intended to be wording for a sign. You could probably cut this thin plastic off with a pair of scissors if you'd like. And I'm gonna use some Mod Podge sealer to seal in my glitter a little bit. Take it outside where it's ventilated and do that. Spray it down good one coat. Okay, now once this is dry and this is the next day, I'm gonna come in with my utility knife, flip this over and trim with that blade right next to the sign. And it is going to cut, be careful, keep your hands out of the way. It's gonna cut a nice clean edge. Look at that, gorgeous. That Mod Podge, that overlap made a nice edge like a piece of paper would be. So it's very easy to cut like you would cut paper. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And I'm gonna sand my edges just a tad and I'm just using a, a foam block, sanding block for that. Down and away, down and away until it is finished. Now, I've chosen some of this thrifted ribbon and it's actually some type of a trim, I think, but it's sort of velvety and shiny. We're gonna use it to trim out the word in just a moment. Now we're gonna use a little bit more of this E6000 on this metal piece and a little hot glue, quickly moving around here, flipping it over, and then we're going to use some clamps to hold it down. These little clamps have been a lifesaver to me. They came from Crafter Square in the Dollar Tree. Add on your hot glue here, and that's all you really need for this plastic piece. Just some hot glue. And then try to get it centered. You will notice in the end product that mine is not exactly centered, but you know, it's okay, I don't mind. Dollar Tree can't even get it exactly centered, so I'm not gonna be too harsh on myself. Now, I thought it would be cute to just have my word overhanging the little ribbon trim a little bit. So I did it like that and just kind of wiggled it under there. And I'm gonna use some hot glue on the back side to glue it down. I'm gonna put it under there and then try to get it close to the same measurement on the other side and then glue it down on the back side as well. Easy to do. Now we'll take off my little clamps and once it is dry, and this is what it looks like. What do you think? Not bad, huh? All right, on to project number three. We're going to use some of this Rust-Oleum paint. We're going to use another pick, my E6000 again, a little hot glue, this cute little tray that I got from Dollar Tree with the truck on it. And then I have some ribbon from the thrift store this plaid it's not the same as the check that's on the truck but that doesn't matter it's okay this is some Dollar Tree ribbon and then some more Dollar Tree ribbon cute I used this in another project for fall and I'm going to reuse it I'm gonna cut off this hanger because we will not use it in this and then take this wheel out and spray paint it the front one time and the back one time while that is drying, we're gonna go ahead and fix our little, a way, we need a way to attach this to the wreath. So we're gonna do it with these pipe cleaners. I'm using a little bit of E6000 along with some hot glue because like we said before, hot glue is gonna pop off of metal a lot of times. So just be sure that you're keeping that in mind when you do your projects because it's very frustrating to get done and then have things falling apart. So I'm gonna put a clamp on here to hold it because I wanna be sure that my E6000 is sticking down like it should. And Dollar Tree has a, um, a comparable adhesive that you can use if you would rather use that. If that's what you have, you can use that. And then I'm gonna clamp it down until it is dry. I gave that a day to dry. And my wheel is now dry. And I'm going to just lay this down and figure out kind of where I want it to be and flip it over and just wrap around those spokes for the wheel. And I'll tell you this, and you're gonna notice this later when I'm putting the greenery on, this thing will break easily. Now I'm surprised I didn't break it with the first one that I did, but this time I actually do break it and I fix it. So 
be sure you're paying attention because you want to be sure I don't want anybody to give up on their project just because they have a bump in the road you can fix little errors like that so I know that I want these to wrap around like this and they're going to be connected with this piece of um, this floor wire and you'll see here see how it's broken how that little spoke is apart from there I just slid it down that piece of greenery started to wrap and then when I wrap the greenery down and get it somewhat secure I'm gonna wrap around right there to catch that spoke and then wrap it back and forth and back and forth to hold that spoke right there in place and then you can secure it with a little bit of hot glue and it won't come apart see that was easy to fix wasn't it now I'm gonna overlap these and with any additional wire I have, I'll just use that and I'll add more wire when needed. And then just continue to wrap just like this. Now the greenery that I'm using is good greenery. It's from Walmart, but it is a good, it's a very good quality, the feel of it. It just feels like it's good quality. It does have some gaps where I have wrapped it and it's kind of flattened out where I've wrapped it. So that's not a problem either. We're just gonna pull another one of those picks apart and then overlap those pieces just like that and these are the pieces that just pop the plastic pieces they pop right off the wire you just pull them sometimes when you're arranging they fall off it's that easy to do so you're just going to use those and add those along the way in any spots that look bare or that need a little more fullness and then one more piece I thought maybe one above the truck would look nice and it is going in the opposite direction and I did intend for it to go that way um, if that bothers you you can certainly do yours you know in another direction or cover the entire wreath if you like now I just use that stem to wrap around the wheel and then I'm using my wires to wrap that around there as well then just a little bit more on the top and holds it in place and then like I said go ahead and go back and put more on where you feel like you need to put more on all right so so far so good now we want to add a bow and I'll tell you this bow is very easy to make you're just gonna fold it over on itself several times and I end up with this pattern of ribbon I have three loops on one side and two loops on the other side I just miscounted it happens sometimes but you know you go with it right we work with it then I'm gonna take this Dollar Tree ribbon and do the same thing just fold it over and over and over until I have at least two loops on one side and two loops on the other side. Or folds, depends on how you look at it. I'm gonna cut a piece of this ribbon right here and it's just gonna be used to attach it together to the frame. All right, this is gonna look like a little bow tie. See there? Squeeze it up, pinch it up, and then decide well, if you want the pattern of the solid color on top. I'm gonna to put my pattern on top like that and then I'll be using a zip tie to close it off you can use whatever you would like to do this to you know hold your bow together whatever you like and then once I have that bow secured I'm just folding it in half and sliding that down before I tighten it all the way make sure it's even in the middle I can start fluffing this out and of course once I start fluffing it out that's when I realize hey I have extra loops that I didn't think I had so happy mistakes yes and I'm just gonna pull them all apart you know how to fluff a bow that's what we're gonna do we're gonna fluff them all out uh, I think I ended up with five loops on the bottom too hmm. okay so I'm just gonna use this to wrap around the center and then secure it to the frame right in that open spot you flip it over and tie it in a few knots so easy to do and now we're going to work on the tails this is about 18 inches here i'm just going to fold this over and dovetail it and then i'm going to do the same thing with the red plaid then i'm going to stack the red plaid on top pinch it together place it down in the center of that piece of ribbon that tied it to the frame and I'm just gonna tie that in a few knots that's what's gonna be our tails 
And because we use wired ribbon, it's going to stand up and stand out and look very pretty for us. So I'm going to pull these tails through the frame. You can curl these with your fingers. You can tuck them around and under floral. I've, I've tucked that plaid one there you see behind the truck. I just pressed it down behind there. And then this red, I don't know, is this metallic? A metallic ribbon. I'm looking to see the right side of it. And there we go. I just flipped it over. Very easy. And then I'm just going to feed it through the wire here. And do the same thing on a different spoke with that plaid. Isn't that cute? I like the way that looks. But you can do yours any way you like. Now I'm going to use a little mini ornament from, I think it originally came from Walmart, one of my viewers told me. And put that there. It's going to be on our door. Then I'm going to trim down this ribbon. And we're going to make a little bitty bow. I've seen people make these bows before, like on a fork. And they're really cute, like a real tiny bow. But I'm just going to do mine like the breast cancer awareness um, tie. I'm going to do it like that. And then I'm going to tie that extra piece that we cut off right around the center. Just like that. A couple of knots. Make sure it doesn't slip out. Then I'm going to flatten it with my fingers a little bit and decide how short I want the tails to be. Trim them down a bit. Now we're going to glue down that little mini ornament. I'm just wiping that glitter off of there. Press it down. And then you can certainly use your E6000 there too. And then put my little bow right over the hole. And I decided that I still wanted to use a little bit of this ribbon. So I'm going to make, you can make a ribbon like that, a bow like that, or you can flip it around like I did the other ones. Flip it around a few times, and we're going to have four loops when this bow is done. Easy. We're going to use a piece of jute. We're going to fold it in half, find our center, tie it off, and then we can tie it on top of the other bow. Really, really really easy to do. We didn't even have to notch these bows. Alright, so again, pull those loops out. You can trim the tails that are on the inside because we don't have intentional tails in here, so you can cut those off, make them a little shorter, just like I'm doing, so that they don't get in the way. And we can plop that little, looks like a four-leaf clover, right in the middle, wrap it around, and just tie that jute where it is at. Now that thing should be very secure in there. But like I said, feel free to use a little bit of hot glue if you need to, to make sure that it doesn't move around. Mine is staying there fine. And I think that that extra ribbon really did the trick. It really brightened up that top part, and I like it a lot. So now we need a hanger. We're going to flip it over and use another little piece of pipe cleaner. I ran out of white, so that's why I'm using the brown. And just wrap it, twist it around there, and then move over just a little bit on the other side of that spoke and go ahead and wrap it again. And now you have a little hanger and it is hidden behind the greenery. Go ahead and trim off any extra wire that you have back there just to keep it from scratching up your wall or your door, wherever you're going to put it. And there you go. Now on to the next one. This is number four. We're going to make a little miniature red truck ornament. This came from Dollar Tree. It sure did. Here's some more of that Walmart ribbon that I showed you. I have some scrap ribbons, just a bunch from the thrift, the thrift store. I have another mini ornament. Some of these little bottle brush trees probably came from Dollar Tree. Here's some mini ones that are dark green, and then I have a couple of little pieces of randomness and a little piece of foam, a little scrap. We're going to cut down the foam so that it will fit inside of that truck. It's hollow in there all the way up to the front. Measure it out, cut it up, glue it down. Okay, now we're going to work on this little ornament, cutting off the hanger. I do end up putting in some 
um, spackling into that hole to fill it up but I'm measuring now to see how tall I want my little sign to be and using just a little scrap of wire here that I have it's kind of like a florist wire I would love to have you subscribe to this channel if you have not already we do lots of budget friendly DIYs and we try to do things that are unique and that bring us joy okay so we're gonna start just pressing those down into the back of that truck these already they had plastic stands originally but I removed those for a project I did last year I'm gonna make this tree look a little bit shorter by just going up about half an inch cutting it off pulling off the little extra little pieces there and getting down to the wire and then we're gonna stick that down into the foam too so so far we have two trees back there I'm gonna use a little bit of this apple barrel white paint and a little brush that also came from Dollar Tree and I'm going to put this on these green trees just to give it a frosted look because the other trees are snowy looking so we want them to kind of match like they've all come from the same place right they're in the back of that truck they all took the same trip from the tree farm there you go and then you got to be sure to let those dry see the difference be sure those are dry before you handle them it doesn't take long I dry my things in front of a fan cut the bottoms off of these then you have a wire just like the other little trees and you can place those down wherever you like I'm gonna place mine around the other trees there we go so far so good they're looking better we can put that sign in now I think it looks great for that okay so here's a bow you've already seen how we made the other ones I did this one the same way cute little bow and then I'm going to put a dot of glue on the top of the sign and just put that right up there pretty pretty simple 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 little bitty perfect for a tiered tray if you have a tall tiered tray just gorgeous okay so there are a couple of things you can do with this now you can leave it like this or you can continue to add and I'm going to do this in layers so that you can choose how far you want to go with your little truck I've just folded this over made one little loop in the middle and then two tails I'm using a little piece of floral wire to twist around the center I'm going to do this tightly and then take the excess off the off the end so we're not poking our fingers we're gonna flare out the tails now I saw this on a larger scale um, by Kathy of my DIY and uh, so I'm gonna use it here in my little arrangement I'm just gonna use another piece of that pick hot glue right in the center of it and then let it dry and then we can use these as picks and they look like you know just a little extra decoration in there I decided that I would like mine to be dovetailed so I went ahead and did that to the ends placed it back in there and I want them to look the same so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one you can use pre-made bows anything you want to to use to embellish yours or you could use an entire bow like the one I put on the sign rather than using these little pick pieces whatever brings you joy so since I have one on the back I'm gonna move one kind of diagonally from it up on the other side just like that so here we have it so far like this I think that's cute but we can keep going I went ahead and used those little scraps of green picks I had I put a little white paint on there and we're gonna add some snowmen these are mini ornaments that I got at the thrift store and this truck has a little like a dent in the top of it that was already there it was made like that I don't know if it was an error or not but it's the perfect place for me to set a little snowman so I'm just gonna put some hot glue there and set my chosen snowman right down in it there you go he looks happy up there doesn't he it looks like somebody has taken their their little truckload of trees to town and they're ready to sell them and maybe they're sitting there with their hot chocolate or their coffee and they're they've made a little snowman to keep them company while they wait okay so if you want to add to the front of this truck a little wreath you can do it with pipe cleaners you know how to do that very easy which is what I've done here and you can add a bow on top you will see after I do that 
that I decided I did not want the red and white on the front. I felt like it was too much with the bow pattern that I have here. So this is what it would look like if you chose to leave it this way. Cute, cute, no problem. Or you can take a piece, a little scrap piece that you have and be very, very, very careful. You have to hold this a long time now because it's going to try to flex apart. This has no wire in it. It's just the plastic. But once it is dried and cool, you can go ahead and put it on your truck. And that's where I'm putting it. Now you can see the glue, but you won't be able to once I get done. And I like this one better. See, the bow is going to go right on top of that. And I was praying for it not to pop back open once I put that hot glue on there. And it didn't. Yay! Okay. Precious. Oh my goodness, I'm having too much fun. So, while I'm still in the zone, I'm going to take some more of that white paint and just put that as a, I don't know, a little sprinkle of snow right there on the front of the truck. But now, we have to put snow on our truck, right? No snowman is going to be there with no snow. So, now I'm just going to put some snow on this truck all around the little snowman on the hood of the truck and all the places that snow would naturally fall and catch on your vehicle so i'm kind of going above the hubs i'm going to go above the tires on the high points of the door places like that just to give it a little bit extra and i was scared to death to go too heavy-handed so i just did it a little at a time but you can see there I just took my finger and wiped away what I didn't like and that was fine and it did fine like that my little I had a camper trailer to go on the back but it didn't fit right so I just left it off but this is what it looks like isn't it cute oh my goodness this is so cute this may be my favorite one of these projects but I really like them all what do you think okay so the last one pretty easy. We're going to take one of these box bags from Dollar Tree. One side is kind of shiny and the other side is flat. And I decided that for my purposes, I'll use the flat side. This came off of a thrifted sign. And then I have some Jenga blocks. Also some paint stir sticks. Plus I have this wood tint. It is a gray color and this is a home decor, um, kind of a stain. And it came from uh, plaid. So I'm going to protect my surface. I'm just using my cutting mat here and an old brush a little chippy brush and I'm just going to start laying on this stain it's a stain not a paint but it doesn't have a funky smell um, yeah I'm real sensitive to that kind of thing it didn't make me cough it didn't make me wheeze it was great I'm going over the bar here all of the little beads which are so easy to paint because they're on that string just like that and then after a little while, I went ahead and wiped this off. And the longer you leave it, the darker it's going to be. And you can layer it to make it even darker. When it dries, it is darker. But just to show you a difference, you can see the gray in there. Yeah, it's pretty. I think it looks really good. We're going to do the same over here with drying those beads really well. And then look how easy the cleanup is. So easy. That's a dry paper towel. And then all you have to do is use a, a damp towel and wipe it up. I'm going to start cutting this box. You can use a cutter, but I thought my scissors might work a little better. And I felt a little more comfortable and confident that I wouldn't cut myself doing it this way. You're just going to go ahead and be sure you don't cut too close in on the picture that you're going to use. So the side you're using, rather. Go ahead and use your, your trimmer or your whatever you want to use to cut. And try to get that edge as straight as you possibly can. Don't worry um, if you didn't get your lines exactly straight because stuff's going to be covered. You see this is paper on top of this cardboard. It's going to peel away a little bit, or it did on me anyway. You can use a glue stick and just press that right back down. You'll never even know. Just press it down. You can use a tool to push it down. It'll be great. I had a little tear here when I was cutting. Totally fixed that too. I'm going to take some jute to just kind of trim out that side. You can see it's kind of raggedy looking. I'm going to carefully, carefully, and very slowly, put a line of glue down this side and then just let it overlap on the ends so I don't get it too short and go all the way down. I'm sorry I'm out of frame here. I'm going to go all the way down on both sides the same way to secure it. And then now we're going to take our paint sticks, which are dry now. We're going to mark where we want them to be cut. 
and then I'm going to easily score this with that same blade that I used to trim up everything else. I'm just scoring that wood, making some little tracks in there, and then do it on the edges too, flip it over on the back, do it on the other edge, same thing. And then you can snap it in half just like that. Perfect. Take a little bit of sanded paper and you just start rubbing that down and kind of I kind of rocked it back and forth so I would have a little bit of a curve on the edges like it is on the other end and there they are finished so this is gonna be the top and the bottom a little bit of hot glue we're gonna put the bottom on and I'm just trying to center it and get it as far down as I can so we can really see the sign without covering too much up and I think that gray looks really good with the background what do you think we're gonna do the same thing with the top And then go across here. Very hot glue. Love my glue gun. Okay, so you're just gonna press that down and know my fingers are not touching the glue. And then you're gonna let it dry because it'll stick on everything if you don't. And then here it is when it is finished. I love you. And I appreciate you. And thank you for understanding why my baby was sick and getting better. She is all better now. I'm happy to report. Just a little cough left, but otherwise she is doing great. Here is a recap of the things we've done. Now, some of these things are in other videos. If you're interested and you want to know, um, be sure you check out links that are in the description box. You can see here our truck, our little hanging sign. Here's our tag sign. So pretty. I love that fabric. I can't believe I got that at the Dollar Tree, y'all. The Dollar Tree. And then look how great the wreath turned out. So pretty. And then we'll have our ornament sign in there too. This is in a different video, that little truck gift. And there we go. So those are all five of them. Which one did you like the best? Which one are you going to try to make? I want to say again, thank you, thank you to all of my subscribers. A huge welcome to everybody who is new and is just coming over to my channel. I appreciate you so much. I'm always glad to see the comments. I'm always grateful for shares and likes and all the love that you give me i'm gonna try to share that with you as well thanks for stopping by and i'll see you again soon